their shoulders to the wheel. So please a warm round of applause for MTR Suleiman, Dr. MTR Suleiman. Thanks, Imran. I wasn't expecting to be speaking here tonight. Martin, thank you very much. Imran, Vimian, Hamid, everybody else here, from KZN government, and all the awardees, thank you very much. I just want to take up from the point that you said, you spoke about we have gold, all other types of commodities. Our greatest commodity is our people. This is a great country, but great people. And to me, Martin is the best country in the world. And I like to take it up from there. You know, we talk about disasters, we spoke about the floods, we spoke about the unrest, we spoke about COVID. But you don't know the quality of people unless you have challenges. And if anything that showed our survival capability is the presence of these three big events that happened in the last two years. When COVID came, I mean, we were told we were probably the only country in the world that shut down the country on the 27th of March, 2020, when there was no wave. To me, sorry, but that wasn't a very credible decision. It wasn't a very sensible decision. How do you shut the country down when there's no wave? And the excuse to say is that you're preparing hospitals. To my mind and my understanding, and I've been to 210 hospitals throughout COVID in the last two years, not a single hospital was prepared. Not enough staff, not enough oxygen, not enough equipment, not enough beds, not enough linen, no setup points to put up. The country was not prepared. Our doctors and our healthcare personnel were already dying. They were, and when saying dying, I don't mean death. They were exhausted. They were overworked. They were not paid for the extra time. When any doctor was, or healthcare worker resigned, nobody filled the gap. The patients were climbing. The hours were climbing. The healthcare workers were burnt out. And on top of that, you come in, COVID comes in as a challenge. We don't meet that challenge. We don't address the challenge. Our greatest asset are our people. The CEOs, the healthcare workers, the doctors, everybody stood up. And even the population stood up. If there was a COVID patient, they didn't say we're scared. They cooked food and took to the house of the COVID patient. That is the best spirit of Ubuntu we've seen. You could put your own life at risk. But they got up and they went across and they gave food to the houses and the queues of people waiting to do that. It shows South Africa as a nation was not affected by color, by race, by class or difficulty. Actually, every difficulty brought us together. There was a time in 2020, December, I'm just going to give you snippets because I don't want to be speaking all night here and you guys want to get to the awards. There was a time in 2020, another tragic story. Department of Trade and Industry, by Minister Ibrahim Patel, credible decision, clever decision, asked the country to get together and form an oxygen, design an oxygen delivery device. So the guys from the SKA telescope and all other engineers got together and they formed the National Ventilator Group. This is purely South African. This is our engineering, this is our brains, our technology, our universities. And they got together and they designed a CPAP machine. The high flow nasal oxygen machines that we're importing were taking 60 liters to 100 liters of oxygen per minute. The high flow machine took 5 to 10 liters of oxygen per minute and was doing an equal, if not a better job. The high flow machine had to be connected in ICU. There's 10 beds, 8 beds, 15 beds. Finish after you can't do anything else. The CPR machine can be put in any oxygen point in any bed in any hospital. So it was a very, very clever idea to do that. The CSIR manufactured 20,000 machines. SAPRA approved it. Solidarity Fund paid for it. There was one problem. The government couldn't get the CPAP machine designed by government, manufactured by government, produced by government, paid by government, approved by government, put into a government hospital. They couldn't do that. And I asked, what's the problem? They were blocked. They were blocked by somebody in some department not to deliver machines. This is the thing that we have to stop in this country. The corruption, the obstruction, the bureaucracy. I call those people traitors and anti-patriots. And we've got to get up and stand up against this kind of people because our people die because of that. Whilst we had no oxygen delivery devices in the Eastern Cape, when they were coming to all the rural hospitals and Livingston and, G uh, and P Provincial and other hospitals in South Africa, they were standing in the queue smiling and dropping dead within seconds. 
They were in the wards, they were dropping dead. In the ambulance, in the taxi, in the car park, in the casualty, they were dropping dead. So I told a professor, where's these machines? A professor called me from Rhodes University. He said they're lying in Cape Town. I said, I'm in Cape Town, send me the machine. So I took it to Tigerberg Hospital. I told them, test it. They phoned me an hour later. They said, we saved two lives. I then took it to Kailicha and I said, test these machines. They called me two hours later and they said, we saved four lives. I put it on the list, all the CEOs of the hospitals in Eastern Cape, do you want oxygen machine? Everyone put up there and yes. I said, forget the rules, send me the machines. In 48 hours, we delivered 900 machines. We didn't ask anybody's permission. We didn't take advice. We didn't write a letter. We didn't get an MOU. Because when it comes to saving life, I don't ask anybody's permission. This country does not belong. <clears throat> and a clear message to government, this country does not belong to you. It belongs to me and 65 million South Africans. And we get up and we fix our country ourselves because it's about our lives and our people. When those machines went into our first hospital called Kala, the CEO called Monday morning. He said, for the first time in COVID, I am smiling. So he said, what happened? He said, every weekend during COVID, we have this terrible job on a Monday morning to count the number of dead people in our wards. It's a terrible job. It's demoralizing. It's heartbreaking. And this is the first Monday that nobody died. Thank you very much for the machine. In November of last year, again, we get calls from the Eastern Cape. The CEOs are crying. I'll come back to what they're crying for. But it showed the quality of our people. The CEO didn't look at the other side. The CEO was crying because of his humanity or her humanity. Because 40 hospitals, the patients had no food to eat. All those people who stole money, the tenderpreneurs, the people who got contracts, your uncle, your grandfather, your brother, your cat, your dog, we need to fix that up. It cannot be allowed. While people are starving from malnutrition in the Eastern Cape, whilst we're talking now, every day there's children dying of hunger in the Eastern Cape because of malnutrition. We need to reverse that. And the CEOs were crying, and we sent in food for patients in 40 hospitals. These are all things that can be fixed. There's not things that can't be fixed. There's enough money. It's the management of the money that's the problem, and how it's being used. And of course, to corporate South Africa, you are part of the problem. Everybody says government is corrupt, but who corrupts government? It's corporate South Africa. Everybody is not a crook in government. Everybody is not bad in government. But there are people in our industries across the board that make things the wrong way, and we have to change that. Four values we need. Four important principles we need. Spirituality, morality, values, and ethics. We need to ingrain that from small into every sector of society right to the top. To be fair to government, whether this country was run by the UK, by the Australians, by the Canadians or the Americans, they're going to have the same problem. Because 7 million people's taxes can't look after 65 million people. It's impossible. The COVID at the budget up. Not the health budget, it ate the entire budget up. We have the problem of the fuel price the food prices, the inflation, the rent dollar currency exchange rate, all these impacts on poor people. But there's a glimmer. You see, corporates, in spite of what I said, there's criminal people everywhere. There's criminal people in doctors, in lawyers, in the religious sector, in the non-government sector, in the non-profit sector. Everywhere there's criminal people. It doesn't make the institutions bad. Those people have to be corrected. The institutions are good. The policies are good. The principles are God. It's those people who go away with that spoil the name of everything that's good. So we now have to solve the problem. And how do we solve the problem? Government, corporates, civil sector, all have to hold hands together. There is no other way to do this job. Nobody can do this alone. And to the credit of the private sector and corporates, you see in the past what your corporates did. Okay, let's see. CSI, put a good manager on the top. Send a message. Are you 90% BE? Yes, tick. Do you get tax certificate? Yes, tick. Thirdly, make announcement in the media. We did this, that, and the other. It was all for credibility purposes, not serious intervention in the country. But when COVID came, there was a mind shift change. CEOs called and said, how do we save our people? When humanity comes into corporates, there's great hope for the country. Because whether you believe it or not, spirituality plays a big role 
in terms of blessings, in terms of progress, in terms of success, may not understand it, but it plays a very vital role. When the floods came on the 11th of April, not a single individual called me to say, I need a boat, or my house fell down, or I need help, this happened. The only guys that called at 11 o'clock at night and 12 o'clock was corporate South Africa and said, how do we help? You guys staying awake late at night, not how to make money, but how to give money. Something has changed. And to that, I salute the corporates. And I salute government that's lifting the barriers to work together. We walked into Nelson Mandela Bay Metro on the 13th of June because the municipality called us and said, we got a problem, the water is a crisis. The business chamber called in and we walked in and within 15 minutes, we laid out a blueprint. What to do and how to do it. We got a full cooperation of the municipality, corporates from the chamber and from the country, the people and everybody working together. And when you do this, when you regard the country as yours, because when 65 million people take ownership of the country, when you say the country belongs to you, then you have to be active citizens. You can't complain, I paid my taxes, I paid this, I paid that, I did that. Yes, you've paid that. Yes, people have stolen money. But you can't sit there and say, I'm not going to do anything and let the country fall apart. It's your country. You've got to save it. And as I said, 7 million people's taxes can't fix everything. So if you've got extra money, what does it kill you to pay a little extra? Willowton, the, uh, the oil company in Peter Marisburg, fixed the whole road up. Took, took all the potholes and fixed it up. Then say, we're going to wait and see what we can do later on. I spoke to them two days ago. I said, I want buying from corporates. I want to upgrade the entire Nordic hospital. They say, you got us in. I said, TP House School in Marisburg, we need to upgrade it. You see, our children got no chance. In a school where it's got 40 kids in a class, in TPA school, there's 173 70 learners with learning difficulties. There is no Alson teacher, a teacher with, with special ed education needs. There it isn't. What is the future of these children? That's only one school. What about the rest of the country? We need to invest. We're taking our center. We've already put in the Alson teacher. We're bringing physiotherapists, occupational therapists, upgrading the building. And Willowton said, give me the proposal. I'll take over the building. That's the kind of buy-in we want from corporate South Africa. And you guys are doing it. We've upgraded Mitchell's Plain Hospital, Bishop Hospital, Glen Gray, Gray Hospital, Concobella, uh, TB, Butterworth, Adelaide, put in balls in nine different hospitals in the Eastern Cape. We've put in 23 balls in Nelson Mandela Bay Metro already in the last five weeks. We're now producing seven million liters of water per day excess to support the city. And we're going on that process all the time. We've drilled 500 balls in the last 24 months. And we, we're doing catch-up surgery in various hospitals. Catch-up surgery is critical to take the pain and the suffering of people away. Right now, our teams and Charlotte McKeke, and we're starting next week, what a 41 million then upgrade of the hospital. We need support from corporates. Government, lift the barriers, no obstacle, no bureaucracy. Corporates come on board, civil society, we work together. This is our country, we save it together. Thank you.